up everyone and welcome back to some more cold waters where we're sneaking in back in the old Los Angeles class sub and our job is to get down this fjord to Narvik which the Russians have taken over. I need to get myself into this little blue circle here and deploy some navy seals and they're gonna go ashore and do some reconnaissance and blow things up and whatever it is that they do. And yeah, so I have a confined space to work in. I'm getting pinged a little bit. I'm just kind of sidling along again very quietly at about five knots. Because there are all of these Russian vessels hanging around in the fjord doing Russian things like looking for submarines full of totally innocent submariners minding their own business just trying to do their job which they want to blow up. We've got a layer to hide under so there's moderate duct and moderate layer, which basically means that if I stay below 151 feet, which is where the layer is, I'm going to be slightly difficult, slightly more difficult, and ooh, that's a close ship, uh, I'm going to be slightly more difficult to detect, so that pinging sonar that that Grisha 3 over there is pinging away at me with, a lot of the sound from that is going to be bouncing off the layer and not getting down to my kind of level. That said, he is pretty close and the Grisha is a kind of very specifically uh, a sub-hunting ship. You can see it's got these scary looking rockets on the front. I tell you, the, since I've started playing this and seeing it actually visually represented 3D graphics. The Russians have all kinds of insane anti-submarine missiles. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to sneak past without introducing you to any of them. But this, for example, if you know anything about World War II, then you'll have heard of the Hedgehog, which fires a barrage of mortars into the water. Uh, the mortars sink down and if they touch a submarine then they explode. Much more effective than depth charges where you have to kind of... Oh, it's a potty apparently, rather than a Grisha. What do I know? The uh, sonar crew has corrected the dumbass captain. Well done, sonar crew. Um, basically, these fire off in a big circular pattern. They're rocket-assisted hedgehogs, essentially. It's also got some torpedoes and some people hanging around on the bank deck for some reason. And if we look underneath... Well, he's definitely the pinger, judging from the actually wreck he just made in my ears. And he's actually quite close. I don't know enough about all these Soviet escorts on my head, off the top of my head rather, to know whether he's got a towed sonar array. Obviously, um, I've got a towed sonar array being a submarine, and that's floating out behind me away from some of the flow noise that's going over the bow sonar at the front, giving me a pretty good picture. And that potty is getting closer. The firing solution is 95%, and okay. I think that means he picked us up on the sonar there. Let's go to ultra... Well, ultra quiet isn't going to help even slightly against sonar in the door. Now... Oh shit. Yep. Yeah. You can have a torpedo. Oh yeah, he's definitely after us. That's 
a shit out of noise maker. Got the torpedo away, we'll try and get some depth. the top so he definitely knows I'm here but then again he was trying to kill me so I reckon he knows that I'm here anyway I'm not really that used to working against um, active sonar which is slightly ironic now and we've got our torpedo and he's searching he's got him he's moving in is maneuvering. The torp's missed, but it's quite a shallow draft. He's going to keep coming round. There's our friendly torpedo. Yeah, he's at the right height now. Go on, get the bugger. I've still got the wire attached, so I can switch over to manual control if I need to. Missed him again. Come on, get him! about here is if it goes around it might. Oh, it's looking back at me now. Let's not look at me. Yeah, now he's cutting onto the noisemaker a little bit. Lost it again. Go on. There he is. Go get him. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Yeah, it looks like you're gonna... Yes! Well, good night, you. This one dead putty. Gigantic bloody hole there. If you've never seen that footage of a um, Mark 46, I think it's a 46 these days, ADCAP torpedo taking out a ship, then wow, go watch it. It will literally just destroy it. Um, so now. I've got a serious problem because A, the Navy SEALs I'm supposed to be escorting in um, yeah, they might have a slightly harder time now that a ship chasing a submarine contact has just blown up. Oh, there he goes, he's sinking away. Um, has just been annihilated. Oh, there's a the secondary. Um, on the entrance to the fjord. So the Russians basically know something is up. It's got a nice oil slick, which is on fire. That's nice. Um, this is bad for so many reasons. One of those reasons is that I now only have three torpedoes left. See if I press R and try to reload, no reloads available. Let's get fairly deep, see if we can't increase speed. So we can get away from this mess. saying, before I got distracted by the uh, falling ship there, I've got a big problem now, which is that I have three torpedoes left. Because I have uh, a SEAL team on board, I've had to clear out my front torpedo room. 
so I have no reloads. Lots of noisemakers and three torpedoes left. And judging by what's uh, up the fjord from me, I've got more than three targets left, so unless I want to start ramming people, which is a surprisingly legitimate option in a submarine like this because they're so tough, because they have to go so deep and withstand such pressure. Um, yeah, I'm still not going to try that. We've still got quite a long way to go until we get to our deployment zone with the SEALs. Why I can't drop them off here, I don't know. Uh, that would be much more useful right now. Distressing number of actually actual military vessels out here. At least three, so. Mm. I'm not massively keen on trying to kill them all. The Cresta were 95% sure, the Riga were 95% sure. They're both quite a long way out though. Cavitating is uh, essentially the propeller spinning around so fast it starts making a lot of bubbles, and the bubbles are exploding. That's the cavitation. That's very easy for passive sonars to pick up. Um, and the depth at which you start cavitating depends on your speed. So essentially, if um, no, that's rubbish. Ignore that. Duh. Here, at about what am I at? Eight hundred and seventy-nine feet. I can go at twenty-five. Well, thirty-one knots, which is fairly snappy, uh, because the pressure of the water, because we're so deep, is stopping any bubbles from forming. From forming. If I was higher up, back when I was uh, around the layer, about two hundred, three hundred feet going at this speed would make an atrocious amount of noise. But we can get away with that. So we're going to do a little sprint to get away from the wreck of the poti. We are getting pinged, but we're not getting pinged quite yet. I think uh, there was that little orange pop-up that popped up over the top right up there when I got pinged the last time. I think that's when it's close enough to definitely get a return. Uh, judging by the fact that, uh, you know, I started getting hedgehogged, attacked by rocket-assisted hedgehogs a minute later, that would kind of indicate that that's what happened. Stealth mission not happening today, Navy SEALs. You're going to have to fight your way on board. Uh, back to ground, apparently. Back on shore. Let's get it right. Come on. So this is the Riga, which again, it's got those horrific anti-submarine hedgehog things on the bow. It's also got some guns, torps, not worried about the torps too much. Well, maybe I should be. And then we've got the Cresta, which is a bigger piece of the kit. Distressingly, it has a helicopter. I don't like helicopters. And of course, more or there we've got two more of those. Rocket assisted hedgehog objective things. Sonar stuff. Might have a toad array. 
I can't remember whether I explained about the Toad Array before. Was that when we got ambushed? Whatever. Um, even though I've got this layer that I can hide against, if a ship has a Toad Array, it can set the depth on that Toad Array. So it could be going along on top, pinging away with the active sonar, and then have the passive sonar underneath the array. Underneath the array. Underneath the layer. You know, this uh, ad-libbed commentary, it's surprisingly hard, you know. <laughs> what was that one? Is that the Riga? Yes, yes it is. Are they going to be able to ping at me? Oh, I hear a helicopter. Oh, yeah, there's one. The thing about helicopters in this, now obviously that's got to be in there for a reason. Um, about oh he's gonna go directly over us oh yeah now we're getting pinged again so we better give you a torpedo mr Cresta come on it's jammed am I firing for oh yeah shit sticks Room three there has jammed. Let's crap out of the noise maker into that. And oh god, what's that? That's a torpedo. Right, well, we're beneath it. We're still not cavitating because we're too deep. I have a feeling I was too deep to fire a torp there. I don't know yet. Hell, let's keep going, what's the worst that could happen? Hopefully they're going to get distracted by all that. Uh, what's bugging me here is that it is active sonar. Yeah, see that? Sonar's got a... Uh... Snake-like pattern going off in that direction. So that's probably good. Don't need to worry about that too much. Now I have two torpedoes. Made another knuckle there. Uh -oh. Let's go deep. And go silent. And hope that none of these hit us. not get to a thousand feet because then we're going to get crushed. Let's up the ballast a little bit. Try and get out back up to about 900. Let the sonar do its thing. Too deep to launch that last torpedo. We 
we've sort of lost contact with the Cresta. The Riga there is pinging us. Oh, the Cresta, yeah, that's behind us somewhere. Oh, we're getting closer to where we need to drop our uh, Navy SEALs off. I don't know what they're going to do when they get dropped off. Idle along and be extremely quiet and hope that nobody notices us. Um, yeah, helicopters. Helicopters aren't as useless as they might seem if you're just thinking about them in a kind of anti-submarine context for the first time because they have um, they can be equipped with dipping sonars so the helicopter flies down hovers in place has a winch with a sonar array on it lowers the sonar array into the water to the, whatever depth it wants and listens in uh, and they can also drop what are called sonar boys which uh, do the same thing it's like uh, like the noisemaker that I keep deploying and that the Poti deployed near the start. Uh, exactly like that, but backwards. So it just sits there and it listens. Um, and then sends the data back to the helicopter or to the warship, whoever dropped it. And you can have active sonar boys. And, oh, that's a third signal. Is that another potty? Who knows? Do sweet F all about it. Yeah, so tube three is inoperable. Let's go back to ultra quiet. Just in case there's any passive stuff going on. Mm, that Riga might be moving in on us. He's going faster than six knots and he's about 2,000 yards out. Does that mean... There he is. Just about see him. Yeah, he's searching. Look at him. Oh, he's one of the ones who fired, so that one must be um, up for reloading, as it were. How's the Cresta doing? Oh, that's the other Poti. Is it worth taking a pot shot? Oh, bollocks, but they're close, aren't they? <laughs> One of the problems with this is that um, obviously they're using active sonar, which is the pinging noise. That does not care how quiet I am. All the active sonar is doing is um, a bit like bats and echolocation. They send the ping out, the ping goes down, and it bounces back off any solid objects. And seeing as though the submarine is pretty solid, and there's bugger all I can do about that. I think this uh, this is a Los Angeles class. It's quite advanced, and it might have uh, an echoic, an anoechoic. I can't pronounce it. An echoic tiles on it, which uh, are a kind of material that doesn't reflect sound very well. So they might be pinging me quite a lot, but they might not actually be getting a lot of information now that we've gone quiet. If the AI is halfway smart though, it's going to know that I'm, you know, sailing up the fjord. And, you know, it's not like there's that many places for me to hide. It looks like the Riga is turning in a little bit. Is he turning in because he's spotted me, or is he just doing a zig for his zag? I don't know. Definitely pinging. Getting pinged by three things at once now, so maybe it's going to be worth... I mean, the Riga and the Cresta are pretty close. Maybe I could 
prop up a little bit, dump off my two torpedoes at them, and try and take them out. Uh, that way there's going to be less triangulation going on. It's going to be, obviously, you know, all these anti-submarine ships up here are sharing their information. I mean, trying to sneak in is obviously not going to be fantastically effective, seeing as though um, the game is up. So maybe, yeah, he's definitely turning this way. Let's start gaining a bit of depth. Gaining a bit of depth. Losing some depth. Way with the planes, there we go. Very slowly, and we'll circle up until we're at a decent height where we can start launching some torpedoes and things. I have no idea how. Whether that's a thing, it might just. that tube might just be inoperable because it's malfunctioned. These things happen. But I reckon go up, give them a ping or two with the active sonar just to make sure things are sensible. Let's cut the balance out, bring the planes back to normal so we level out a bit. Make sure we turn around so that we're bow on. his hole. Yeah, there he is. I might be looking completely in the wrong direction, of course. Is he closing in on me? Questions, questions, questions. Is this boat that I'm seeing here an accurate representation? Well, it might not be because I'm pretty much going entirely on the sonar here. Might not be there at all, might be right on top of me. And God knows what the crescent is doing. Is he gone? There he is. Well, we're dealing with active sonar, aren't we? So we could probably speed up some.
this tour might have been Cresta. This one, it, yeah, that is the one that's going to be Cresta. That's an enemy tour. That's in the water, that's either from a submarine or something else. pressure on the water so it's easier to flood but we just killed something again and I can live with that. That's a torpedo heading our way though. Let's give it something to think about. We need to get a bit higher so that they can start sorting that flooding out. compartment there, and that's bad news. Our other torp must have missed, but we've got two. That's going to do for now. Enemy torp over there is in a search pattern. He's circling away. The Riga is probably still after us. Something else pinging away as well, which is great. But at least we should have scared the bejesus out of him. this off, you know. <laughs> I think we're all going to die in a fjord in Norway. The third battle of Narvik. So, I reckon... What do we do now? I think what we need to do is sort this flooding out. For fuck's sake. See, that was a stupid mistake. I turned my active sonar on to do the contact. I've been pinging away personally for the last however long. God, that was dumb. Ugh. That explains why the pings were so loud. <laughs> yeah, so I've been pinging away. No wonder they found me. Well done, hapless. We're learning through failure. So let's get the flooding sorted. Then we'll go deep again. And I think just sprint the last bit into the deployment zone and then we'll see how it goes from there. This, of course, that plan is going to depend an awful lot on whether the flooding starts up again if I go deep. We're steadily sorting it out. But 
is going to depend on quite a lot of the, quite a lot of stuff. There's the, the Riga thing, which has apparently stopped. with that if it's decided to run aground. There's Narvik there. You saw this flooding out. We're barely even halfway there. Very depressing. That torpedo is still going nuts. fight anymore, we gotta hide. We're going in the right direction. Let's just go deep and fast. So, I mentioned this was the third Battle of Narvik. The first Battle of Narvik and the second one were during the Second World War. And shit, the Riga started up again, isn't it? Wonder if I can outrun the bastard. from that circling torpedo, which is still circling away. One from the Riga and one from the Poti. The Poti is 95% certain that it's crashed, which I can live with, I like that. Apparently the Riga's not after us, it's just sitting there. Maybe it's reloading, maybe... I don't know where my other torpedo went, maybe it's, it had a near miss or something. And it's uh, decided discretion is the better part of Valor, maybe it's got a lot of shock damage. I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm still flooding. We're just, just above the layer now. Oh, we definitely got pinged there. Shit. Have a noisemaker. Yeah, see, we went above the layer instantly. Look at that thing! That's insane! Firing bloody rockets at me. Go away! Leave me alone! Yeah, that's all it bloody took for it to have a go at me again, Jesus. No, 
knuckle with a noisemaker and then that should do for the passive side. Apart from that, I'm going to slow down a bit. Because we're still flooding. Where the hell are you? Oh yeah, see, that's... that you can always see the aircraft. Bit weird. Uh, anyway, we're worried. Seeing as though we're going to be going at six knots for the foreseeable future. <laughs> So, the Germans moved into Narvik, they transported a load of uh, mountain troops, a load of uh, Gebirgjäger, I can't pronounce that, uh, up the fjord and took control of Narvik, which is about here. When they invaded Norway in 1940. Uh, so the first battle of Narvik was when a... There must be damage control coming on. Oh, we're getting there. The first battle of Narvik was when a Royal Navy destroyer force sailed up the fjord and attacked uh, all the German destroyers while they were in port. Well, some of them were in port, about half of them were in port, and the, a lot of them were torpedoed and seriously damaged by gunfire by the Royal Navy destroyers. But there were other German destroyers, Kriegsmarine destroyers, hiding up some of these other fjords. The side, um, to the side of the Njavik fort and they ambushed the Royal Navy destroyers when they were on the way out. Very typical destroyer action, especially from the Royal Navy. The Royal Navy destroyers were kind of famously hyper-aggressive nutters. Who really leapt to any opportunity to get stuck in and there's so many examples during World War II of just a few Royal Navy destroyers fighting off much superior uh, German forces because the Germans. That sounds like a helicopter. Please don't drop a torpedo on me. That's all I ask. This is the kind of thing that I'm not sure I should be able to see. I'm not sure if you can actually hear... Oh, what's he doing? He's doing something. story time again for a second. Something else that um, aircraft can carry, planes, helicopters like that, is MAD equipment which uh, works on magnetic detection. I can't remember what the proper acronym stands for. Um, essentially, obviously, a uh, submarine is a huge chunk of metal. Creates a magnetic anomaly compared to the background, so you can pick that up uh, from a helicopter or an aircraft just by flying over. So mm, that could be what he's up to. It doesn't look like he's doing his dipping sonar thing. Of course, 
course, that is a helicopter that can carry torpedoes. I'm pretty scared at the moment that any any second you might just crap out a um, a homing torpedo right next to me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna struggle to avoid that. Uh, so just go away. There's nothing to see. That's the first battle of Narvik. The second battle of Narvik, the Royal Navy came back and they brought HMS Warspite with them. They brought a battleship with them and basically chased the German destroyers all the way up the fjord and destroyed them all. Um, and you might be asking fairly legitimately, look at this, look at this confined space. German destroyers with torpedoes, how did the Brits get away without being hit by any torpedoes? And the answer is because because of the um, a fjord is a mixture of fresh water and salt water, so you know you have all these uh, rivers uh, from glasses and things further up feeding into the fjords mixing with the salt water which is obviously what the ocean is formed of so what you get is, um, ah, we're not flooding anymore, let's put some bloody speed on, um, what you get is a mixture of water, the fresh water is less dense than the salt water, so it's on top, that's probably why we've got this layer, so the top layer is fresh water, the bottom layer is salt water. And these German torpedoes were designed to work in salt water and they were in fresh water uh, because fresh water is less dense. The German torpedoes were going along at a greater depth than they would have been otherwise. Uh, so they would have been they would have hit in salt water, but a lot of the time they just passed straight underneath the British ships. And as for the other side round, I'm sure you can imagine what happens when a flimsy little destroyer gets hit by 15-inch uh, shells from HMS Waspite. It ain't pretty. Go away, to the helicopter. Um. Right. Yes, we're plodding along still. Really missing one of those other crazy Russian submarine inventions, which is a. Um, everybody's seen uh, nuclear weapons fired from submarines, uh, nuclear missiles that get fired straight up out of the ocean. Uh, from this sort of thing, you can also fire anti surface ship, anti ship missiles, ASMs like the Harpoon. Um, Tomahawk missiles, you can fire Tomahawk missiles designed to hit land targets out of this thing. Of course, the Russians came up with a missile, a, um, an AA missile, a SAM, that you can launch from a submarine. That would be really handy right now, because I bet that little Felix, Tormo, whichever one it is, would really benefit from being surrounded by red hot flying fragments of shrapnel right now. Um, and do you know what? I'm just sidling along. It doesn't look like anything is detecting me right now. So what I'm going to do is we're going to 10 knots. Let's whack the time dilation on. And we'll see if we can't get across the de deployment area a little bit faster. Release the Navy SEALs and then uh, we 
might be able to just leave the combat rather than trail all the way up the fjord again. We'll see how it goes. Oh shit, that's a torpedo. Where's that torpedo? Right, so the helicopter's been talking to... Yeah, okay, let's get the fuck out of here. Yes, we're cavitating. I know we're cavitating. I'm not worried about passive sonar right now. See. Knuckle, let's dump another noisemaker into the knuckle. Keep that in between us. Make another knuckle in between us and that torpedo. The problem could be. And, well, the biggest problem I've got right now is I'm going too fast to pick up on the bloody torpedo. Uh, but I could have an issue, it depends on where I sent that to activate. Well, let's dump out some speed, let's go quiet again. Let's see if we can't get a better picture. Like I say, it's gonna... Oh shit, here we go again. Leave me alone! I know we're cavitating. I think it's kind of preferable right now. What the bloody hell was that firing at? Was that the bloody Rieger again? It's not you. And it's not you. And in fact, I've maneuvered so hard now I've lost everything. I have no idea what's going on. <sighs> Let's try getting some depth again. What the hell is that up there? Is that the helicopter again? Yeah, that's the helicopter with this new sonar, and that's a torpedo. Definitely a torpedo. And we're flooding again because we went deep. Looks like that torpedo's lost us a little bit. Let's go around to the side. We've made a knuckle. Let's put another noisemaker in that knuckle. Ping from that top. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. Hasn't got us, it might be going for that knuckle. I'm pressing the wrong button, I need to go the other way. That's another bloody mortar thing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Another noisemaker. Fuck off, Mr. Torpedo, <laughs> I want to live. See, if I had some torpedo reloads here, I would very happily be knocking the bejesus out of these ships. Oh, here we go again. Torpedo. Go 
Throw away, torpedo. Nobody likes you. Oh, more hedgehogs. Chugs as well. Okay, the propulsion just got damaged. Need to fix that. The torpedo, no torpedoes got us again. How many torpedoes are in the water here, Jesus? Three, come on. I'm out of noisemakers. And, yep, let's have an emergency blow because we're going to need to go upwards because we just got sunk. So let's try and get everybody out of the boat. Yeah, that's a big hole. That's another big hole. Yeah, game over. I blame the seals. I reckon it's all their fault. So, yeah, pressure hull breach, critical damage, uncontrolled flooding, the ship is lost. Your orders. I think abandoning ship would probably be a good move. Yeah. So, there we go. That didn't go very well at all, did it? I was mostly trying that one out because I am kind of looking at the campaign. One of the missions in the campaign is to deploy a SEAL team like this, and I simply haven't been able to do it. Uh, I don't know, well, I don't know how to do it, but it's not a training mission or anything for it. The manual is a bit skimpy on it, so I thought I'd give it a try. Of course, I can't actually get into Narvik to deploy the SEAL team, but I have a general indication of what the mission kind of looks like now. Uh, so we sank a Poti, and we sank a Cresta. That's not a good exchange rate for a Los Angeles class submarine. Um, if I had more torpedoes, if I had a SEAL team that was mostly made up of, say, midgets, that would be fantastic, but apparently they have to have all kinds of stupid gear. Why we need SEAL teams in there, we can't just rely on the Norwegian resistance, I don't know, but I don't make these decisions. So, there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. Bit of a um, saunter up Narvik Fjord. Bound to end in tears, really, from the from the moment we got spotted. And I need to kind of think of a way to sidestep that active sonar. And of course, in restricted waters like a fjord, like this, it's going to be even more effective. Of course, it's quite difficult for me to run away from ships, uh, go round them, and avoid them. That kind of thing. Could have come out very differently, I think, though, if that third torpedo, the torpedo in Cheap 3, hadn't malfunctioned. Might have been able to sink another ship and get a bit more breathing space, but, yep. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. It's uh, maybe a little bit better representation of what Cold Waters is all about than the first video I did, where you could actually tell what's going on. Most of the time here I haven't had that much of a clue. And especially when I'm taking those evasive maneuvers, when I'm fleeing away from these Russian anti-sub ships on the surface, your sonar goes to pot and you lose the picture completely. So, it's interesting, I'm kind of working my way through it. 
So, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next video, guys.